Dear listeners, good morning and welcome to Comme d'Archi, season one of Summer, the podcast that opens the doors to the fascinating world of architecture. For newcomers, let me introduce myself. I'm the spokesperson of Anne-Charlotte Despont, PhD in History of Architecture, published author, head of a communication and development agency based in Paris, France, dedicated to architecture. Let's meet every week to discuss culture and architecture with specialists and learn how to look at projects through a context and diversity lens. To offer you the best content, Philippe Henry, sound engineer, is at the technical helm of the podcast. Thank you for being with me today, and now it's time for talent. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archie. Around Big John, or John Hancock Tower, Chicago. On our Instagram page, at Comme d'Archie Podcast, starting from a black square, you may have watched an excerpt from a film showing the artist Michel Auboiron in full performance, painting one of the quote-unquote castles of modern times, the John Hancock Tower located on Michigan Avenue, the main artery of the capital of American architecture, Chicago, USA. The video captures the gigantic scale of this icon of modern architecture signed by the mythical architecture agency SOM, Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, today winner with AREP and Atelier 234 of the Grand Paris Charenton Bercy project. But let's get back to the big John of his little name. Delivered in 1969 and having taken part in the world's race for the tallest skyscrapers, after the Empire State Building and before the World Trade Center, itself quickly destroyed by the Sears Tower, Big John is 344 meters tall and is today among the top 40 tallest buildings in the world. Big John still asks today, do we always have to claim innovation when we talk about mixed use? Remember, Big John's mixed use program dates back to the 1960s. In the 1996 book, Skyscrapers, Judith Dupré talks about it in these terms. Home to more than 700 condominium dwellers, as well as offices, stores, and a hotel, the John Hancock Tower is, at the moment, the tallest multi-use building in the world. Residents pay a small price for the telescopic views they enjoy on the states of Illinois, Indiana, Michigan, and Wisconsin. Their apartments are so high that sometimes a call to the building manager is necessary to find out what the weather is like on the ground. A comprehensive number of services are provided in the building, which also has its own post office, garbage collection, and supermarket. Technically, if you live and work in the John Hancock, you never have to leave it. An Orwellian thought indeed. Another question asked by Big John. As the world's population tends toward 8 billion, is the vertical city model still a solution to cope with this growth? Despite increasingly frugal ecological thinking, a growing number of architects think so. But is the Jeddah Tower that will soon be delivered, which is expected to reach a height of one kilometer, that exemplary? Why always this race to the highest point? Fortunately, the ecological transition is taking over the model of the tower tempering its spirit of power while developing ecological virtues, wooden structure, hanging gardens, energy autonomy, etc. We will undoubtedly talk about it again in a while in the light of a well-eroded use. The last concern raised by Big John. Artificial intelligence and advances in construction technology have enabled his remarkable edification. To quote Judith Dupré again, the Hancock's tubular structural system, as well as the Sears Towers one, was conceived by the late Fazlor Khan from SOM Agency, a pioneer at engineering tall building construction. By the 1960s, computers made it possible to study new and different structural systems. The new software, combined with the development of high-grade steel and fusion-welded sections, made it possible for Khan to design structures that could resist the sideward force of the wind and the downward pull of gravity more effectively because they were absorbed by all three dimensions of the building. Today, the parametric takes over from the constructive performance. Nevertheless, how far is man capable of going without running to his doom? Bertrand Lemoyne, in his article published in Archie Storm No. 102, I quote, The process with BIM may seem to move away from creation in the traditional sense. 
However, it retains its essential components, namely culture, know-how, invention, critical questioning, and materialization. It is up to architects to defend these prerogatives. It is up to the clients to understand their usefulness and complexity in their own interest if they want to survive as such. Certainly, and in the image of Big John, in the light of its historical context, this new field of possibilities multiplied by the big data must today open up an exploratory dimension that is out of the ordinary and reasoned, taking into account the ecological aspirations of a vast section of the population. To our pencils... Thank you for listening. Don't forget to tune in to our previous content on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you like it, make sure to promote the podcast by giving it five stars on Apple Podcast and adding a comment or on any of your favorite podcast platforms. And don't forget to subscribe and listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.